I'm Bree. This is my husband, Zach. He's a dog trainer. We're showing you how we train both of our dogs everything, everywhere we go. In this episode, we're getting into some serious training with my new puppy. This is Veronica, in case you don't know. And getting her attention at all in the real world needs a lot of work. Unlike Zach, who has endless ideas for training opportunities and he's just like constantly inspired, I actually tend to hit a lot of plateaus with my training where I get a little complacent unless I have something there to remind me to keep pushing forward. I want to show you the best hack I've found, besides our videos of course, for actually keeping myself excited and motivated and on the right track with Veronica's training. This is a training card. It has suggestions for everything I need to work on based on Veronica's actual age. I get one of these every month in my pup box, along with relevant supplies, toys, and treats. The suggestions they give on the card, they also give you stuff you can use to work on training that. Another amazing tug toy. Drop it. Oh, yes, that was good. Zach's been working on that one. I can't take credit. And obviously, Great quality training treats. I've got a dental supply. Definitely need this. Dental treats, that's amazing. Look at this thing, it's got ridges. I'm gonna start catching up right now on this dental work. She loves it. Pup Box has been a game changer for me and Veronica. I just wanna make sure that you guys have a chance to try it out too. You can get 50% off your first Pup Box when you sign up at our special link. It's pupbox.com slash Zach. I really hope you guys are subscribed to this channel because this has to be one of the more original dog training series on YouTube at the moment. How do you train your dog to not get eaten by a bear? I'm asking you. Oh, me? Yeah. If I'm really simplifying it, it's teaching your dog how to reliably stay even when they want to go and come when called. And Veronica is not perfect on either one of those no. by any means. Virtually no dog is perfect on those things, but our goal is to just get it as reliable as we can. And that's going to be my top priority. That is if we can find a place to sleep tonight. From here until we pull into our driveway in Alaska, it's wilderness. It's this. Look, no, we've been seeing wildlife like this for hours. With all of this peace and quiet, the animals really get to just be themselves. But when a bear is being himself, I am scared of him. We found a good place to stay for the night. Do not leave me alone out here. I'm not. Okay. okay. I'm on. Good girl. We're scared to get out. There you yeah. go. I think I'll feel safer in the morning and I'll be able to exercise them out there tomorrow. But I want to give you an idea of where we stand with inertia so that you can see what we're working towards with our puppy Veronica. I want to make sure stay is really good out here with a distraction. Good. Now I want to make sure I can call her away from a distraction, albeit minor in this case. Come. Throw in a heel for good measure. Yes. Good. Look at me. Okay, and so all of this is just demonstrating that I have her under control, off leash in this uncontrolled environment. Lie down, good girl. Being able to have motion here with toys that she likes, throwing some treats, a Frisbee. We all know she likes Frisbee very much. Come, and then being able to yes. get her to ignore those things and come to me is critical. When I had a TV show in Britain, we called this Temptation Alley, where we'd have all sorts of amazing things laid out before the dog, and we would train them how to come past all of those things. So I'm hoping to do some of that with Veronica. She's really interested in those toys, which for purposes of this lesson are going to be substitutes for grizzly bears. You gotta start somewhere. Sit. All I'm doing right now is getting her warmed up to make sure she understands sit and essentially stay in this environment. If she didn't, that would say, okay, she's a little overstimulated. Maybe I need to change the environment, make it a little bit easier for her. Because just by virtue of being outside, that's hard for a lot of dogs, especially young dogs. I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna come over here. Okay, I'm gonna release her close. Make sure she can do come. Here, okay, come. I really want to reiterate to you that you cannot over reward come and stay. You want to have those treats throughout your house, in your pocket. You never want to leave the house without them. You don't want to take the attitude of, oh, they know it, or I expect them to come to me because I'm the alpha, or I expect them to come to me because they love me, or any other number of reasons. Find ways to make it worth their while. Nice little warm up, primed for this lesson, I hope. I'm gonna drop a treat in front of her. And this is impulse control. That is, pay attention to me when you want something else. That is huge. I mean, that is so much of dog training. There's almost certainly going to be confusion right on her part with a lesson like okay. this. So I wanna be mindful of that and try to minimize that to the best of my ability. Come. Ah, could be better. You see, she was like, I wanna get that treat, but uh, I see that it's impossible, so I'll come to you. But I'd rather her not go for the treat to begin with. Sit. Here, come, yes, good. See that? 
That's where it starts. I think a lot of people are under this impression that once you have something like that, calling them off a major distraction should be super easy. And it's not. I think we need to find something a little bit more distracting than a treat for Veronica. And then we can gradually increase the level of distraction from there. Small steps just to verify that she loves her little tennis ball. She loves going after those. Is it reasonable to expect her to leave it alone and stay? I think yes. Sit, good. If I ask her to stay, that means stay even if I'm throwing something that you normally go after. Don't get too hung up on the difference between leave it and stay in this case. The bottom line is I want her to hold position while there's a distraction. Good, see how I'm making it more and more distracting. Here, oh, ah, failure on my part. No one's perfect, leave it. Here, yes. Notice how far away I am from Veronica. Here, come. Yes. And these skills are very new to her, so she's really starting to do well here. Stay. Here. Come. <laughs> oh, did you get distracted along the way? Here. Let me be patient with her here for a second. Something, there's a new scent there. She's not going after the distraction that I introduced. Here. Good girl. The number of times in a day where I stop whatever we're doing and let Veronica investigate something, I mean, it takes up like 50% of my day. That's a piece of puppy parenthood that I underestimated a little bit. One of the reasons we're losing ground to a lot of dominance training techniques in the public is because of impatience. No, you shouldn't sniff on the ground when I just gave you a request. I'm not gonna let you do that. I'm gonna make you do that thing. And what I think people don't realize is if you don't let them satisfy their curiosities more towards the beginning part of their training, it's like going to hinder your training in the future. I need to go back over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you, you might see that I'm breaking through here. I've got multiple balls now. I dare you to juggle. Stay. For anyone who's had a dog that has chased an animal before, you will understand how important stay and yes. come are. So for purposes of this lesson, this is a grizzly bear. This is an elk. This is a moose. This is a coyote. And this is a wolf. Sit. The tendency for a lot of people is to try to jump to the major distraction and aggressively correct a dog, perhaps in many cases, when their dog doesn't listen to stay or come in a situation like that. But really, this is one of the missing links, doing exercises like this. Okay, come. She wanted to make absolutely sure. I don't know if you caught her okay. jump there. That was cute. You get them in the habit of using their brain to resist temptation and come to you or pay attention to you instead. Yes. I'm gonna do stay with distance now. Before I was calling her away from the thing, here I'm hoping to have her address that temptation head on. All right, needs work. Ignore the temptation and come straight to me. Good. All right, here's a moose, here. Good. Here's a wolf, here's a squirrel. Oh no, a wolverine. That's a bear. Will she come? Come. Yes. Well done. She even had to avoid them when she came to me. Obviously, we can't just go from little balls to bears. We have to find other things that tempt her. Now we know that she's a frisbee dog in the making. Stay. Wolf, moose, bear, coyote, squirrel, polar bear. Uh oh. Really good example. She's like, oh, I'll stay for those balls. Those are easy. But that frisbee, I gotta have that. She loves her frisbee. To people watching this, they might think, oh, well, she left the balls alone. Frisbee's not that different. But actually, it was clear there the frisbee was a different class of distraction to her. I like that she likes frisbee. I don't wanna quell her desire in that frisbee. But at the same time, if she won't stay with a rolling frisbee, how is she gonna stay when she encounters a wild animal? Leave it. Yes. When I zoomed in on the frisbee distraction, yeah. she was able to summon enough self-control to not Here. go after it when I asked her to Come. leave it alone. Yes. If she's prepared to resist multiple distractions, yeah. that means she's stronger mentally on this skill. Leave it. Come. Come on, come on, come on, come on, yeah, beautiful, and come here. I'm going to continue to address this in as many different ways as I know how to. Perfect. Let's see if we can do a little bit of a Frisbee lesson, see where she is right now. Frisbee is a great way to satisfy mentally, physically, get them nice and happy, tired, grow their brain. There's a million reasons. So I'm doing a combination of tug of war, Urgh. get it, yeah. 
and then I'm doing rollers to keep her low on the ground, teach her how to get it by the rim regularly. She's around six months old, so we do rollers for the most part, but we toss it too sometimes. Just want to be conscious of her over jumping. Notice how we're keeping our frisbee game nice and short here. Go! Every once in a while, I'll even sneak in a throw. Well done! She's doing great on bringing it back too. Go! Yeah! So her frisbee game continues to look great. It is a great way to exercise her and build communication, which is what we are all about doing. When I do a fetch video like this, pointing out how it's a good way to satisfy them mentally, physically, to get their energy out, someone will invariably say, but well, you're just gonna get them in better shape and they're gonna become more difficult to tire and satisfy, as though keeping your dog in really good physical shape is somehow a detriment. I really think this is the wrong way to look at this. What's not being taken into account is how much communication you're building with your dog when you're teaching teaching them how to play fetch, how to play frisbee, how to do all of these tricks. So in those times where they are becoming difficult to manage, you have this whole bed of experience that you've built with them where you can easily communicate, okay, we're not gonna play fetch right now, but can you relax? Maybe later we'll go out. So I really think it is a poor argument to avoid playing regular fetch or frisbee or whatever with your dog because you're worried about them becoming extremely fit and requiring more of your time. You're not creating a monster by keeping them in shape. You're creating a healthy dog who understands how to listen to you better. That's how I've always seen it. Look, maybe I'm wrong. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments. We are getting this close to the Alaska Canada Highway, also known as the Owl Can. It's a very epic drive that very few human beings have done. It's not without risk. Obviously, we've talked about the animals, but you know, there's mechanical failure, there's weather. I mean, we think we're prepared. I thought we were ready for this, and I do not anymore. <laughs> it's all fine that she did great today, but in our next episode, you're going to see what happens when it does doesn't go so great. <laughs> and my training goes completely off the rails. If you want every advantage you can get with training your dog, make sure you're subscribed to my videos and get a Pupbox subscription too at pupbox.com slash Zach. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Be Real. Get a copy of both of my books or audiobooks for a detailed explanation of how to train your dog, all of the basics and beyond. <laughs>